Hello everybody, welcome to my second lesson in my Computercraft Lua tutorial. Before I get started, I want to point out that before, I mentioned I would be uploading these lessons to Twitch.tv as well as YouTube. As I was trying to upload the first lesson, I discovered that Twitch changed their policy. So you can only upload videos if you're an affiliate or a partner with Twitch now. Since I don't see myself becoming either of those anytime soon, I won't be uploading to Twitch after all. I'll let you all know if I find another platform I would like to upload to. Feel free to give me some suggestions if you'd like. In the last lesson, I talked about what Lua is, but I want to review it real quick before we start this lesson. Lua is a procedurally written, interpreted programming language. The Lua 5.3 reference manual, linked in the description, refers to it as an embedded language. What that means is instead of programs being run as software within the environment of your computer's operating system, an embedded language or interpreted language is written within software and interpreted by the software within the environment of that software. Procedural means that the program manipulates data in a step-by-step -step process. An object-oriented programming language does the same thing, but it's written to manipulate data within the concept of objects. Procedural languages can be written like object languages, but it takes a bit more creativity. Back to what I was saying about Lua being an embedded language, Lua was primarily designed to be used within programs written in C, but in this case it's embedded in a Java program, namely Minecraft. This is made possible thanks to the modification for the game Computercraft. Computercraft adds various types of programmable computers to the game, all of which run programs written in Lua. The type of computer you want to use is different depending on what kind of program you want to create. If you're playing in survival, some computers require more expensive materials to create. If you're playing multiplayer, go ahead and sign into your server, or if you're playing single player, go ahead and load into your world or create a new world. I'll be making a creative world for the sake of teaching. In creative mode, you have the ability to double tap the spacebar to fly around freely. If you press E, it will open your inventory, which in creative mode will contain most of the blocks and items in-game. If you install just enough items, you will see an even bigger, a bigger list to the right with a search bar at the bottom. I was going to mention that you can find the command block in the JEI list, but I just found out command blocks no longer appear in the list. I don't know why that is, but now if you want to get a command block, you will, you will need to have cheats enabled so you can use the slash give command to give yourself the command block. Anyway, I'm getting off track. The first computer I'll show you is the standard computer, just called computer. I've moved over to a less crowded place. If you're in survival and you don't have cheat mode enabled, you can look it up in JEI and click on it, or you can press the R key while hovering your mouse over the item to see the crafting recipe. To my surprise, it looks like they've updated the crafting recipe since the last time I checked. It used to only require 7 plain stone, but now you can use stone, andesite, diorite, granite, the polished versions of those three, or even infested stone, which is a stone that has silverfish hiding inside of it. Those 7 blocks are placed in the crafting grid in the shape of pants like so. You also need one redstone dust directly in the middle, and one glass pane below that. It appears the glass pane can be colored or not. You can click or press R on any of these ingredients to see how to make them as well. And then you can press backspace to go back to the last recipe you were looking at. Once you've placed all the items in the correct pattern in the grid, you can take your computer from the output. To start using it, just place it on the ground somewhere and right click. All Computercraft computers come preloaded with the Craft OS operating system. An operating system is essentially a program that controls the fundamental functions of your computer. In addition to the OS, these computers also come with various pre-installed programs. If you type programs into the console here, it will show you a list of all programs currently on the computer. You run a program by typing the program's name into the console, like running a command in chat, but without the slash. Feel free to pause the video and explore these yourself, but I'll be going over what some of these programs do in the next lesson. There are also various peripherals that you can attach to a computer. In the real world, a peripheral is a device like a keyboard, mouse, printer, external hard drive, etc. In Computercraft, there's a disk drive, which uses those old school floppy disks rather than CDs. There's a printer that can actually use squidding to print stuff onto pieces of paper. There's a monitor so you can display information in the world instead of just the computer terminal. The monitor can be resized by placing additional blocks. There's a speaker which will let you play literally any sound or song within Minecraft, including sounds that come from resource packs or other mods. There are also wireless and wired modems so you can have something that's akin to an internet connection. Computercraft also has access to the real world's internet using something called the HTTP API. 
I'll be, I'll be going over that in a future lesson too. The peripherals are attached to the computer either by placing them directly next to, above, or below the computer, or by linking them together with wired modems. You can again press R on any of these items to see their crafting recipes. I'll go over all of this in more detail in future lessons. The next type of computer I will show you is the turtle. Once again, use R to check the crafting recipe of the turtle. It's seven iron ingots in a pants shape again, one standard computer in the middle, and one chest below that. Turtles are special because they are essentially robots. First of all, as you can see, the turtle has its own inventory to hold items. Second, the turtle has some programs that a standard computer cannot use because of its capabilities. For example, if we grab some fuel items like coal, I just figured out you can enable cheat mode by holding control and clicking on the wrench icon right there. There we go. For example, if we grab some fuel items like coal and put it in the turtle's inventory, we can then run the refuel program. You can press the tab key to autocomplete what you're typing. As you can see, the turtle consumed one of the coal to raise the fuel level from 0 to 80. Then we can run the go program by typing go, space, and let's say up, and then press enter. As you can see, the turtle moved itself up, and it used one level of its fuel by doing so. If we type go right, the turtle turns itself right, but this time it didn't use fuel. If you type refuel zero, you can see the fuel level without consuming any fuel items. The turtle only uses fuel if it's moving in any direction, but not if it's turning and staying in place. Next, if we type go forward, back, no, sorry, go forward, down, back, left. As you just saw, the turtle moved in all of those directions. The turtle doesn't just do fancy dances though. It can also hold tools and interact with the world. If you grab a diamond tool such as a pickaxe and put it in the turtle's inventory, then type equip to left, the tool will be attached to the left side of the turtle. The two represents which slot in the turtle's inventory it looked for a tool to equip. You can also equip an item on the right side of the turtle too. You can equip some peripherals and certain other items this way as well, making the turtle a very versatile companion. You can also equip things by putting them with the turtle in a crafting grid, like so. With this though, if I run the excavate program, the turtle will start digging a 3x3 hole going straight down to the bottom of the world. Now I'm just going to press Ctrl T to stop the... Pro oh. I'm going to just press Ctrl T to stop the program because I don't want it actually digging to the bottom of the world right now. Pressing and holding Ctrl T for a second or two will stop any program that's currently running, unless that program is designed to ignore the terminate event. I'll explain what that means in a future lesson. Turtles can also place blocks as well as place or pull items from storage containers such as chests. For now, let's move on to the next computer type, pocket computers. If you press R to check the crafting recipe for this, You'll see a pocket computer is made in the same way as a standard computer, but the redstone dust is replaced with a golden apple. I just found out you can use the scroll wheel to cycle through all the recipes for this. Interesting. Pocket computers are just like standard computers, but they're portable and have a much smaller terminal. You can access the terminal by right-clicking with the item in your hand. Just like turtles, pocket computers have a few pre-installed programs that can't be used on a standard computer. A single peripheral can be equipped to the back of a pocket computer by putting it together with a peripheral item in a crafting grid, but there are some peripherals that it can't use. For example, a monitor and a wired modem can't be used with a pocket computer because there's no way to connect them. However, it is possible to use a wireless modem to send information to a computer that is connected to a monitor and display information that way. A pocket computer can also be placed inside of a disk drive, that, and a standard computer will be able to treat the pocket computer like a floppy disk, giving it access to all the files within that pocket computer. Up till now, I've been showing you computers with the standard level of technology, but there are more levels of technology. This is an advanced computer. It's crafted in the same way as a standard computer, but you replace the blocks with gold ingots. Or you can replace the redstone with a standard computer and eliminate the glass pane from the recipe. Advanced computers are just like standard computers, but they have color graphics. They can take mouse input, whereas standard computers can only take keyboard input. They can multitask. 
and they have more programs than the standard computers. And there's some code that you can use in advanced computers, but not in standard computers. There are also advanced turtles and advanced pocket computers, and they pretty much tell the same story. There are also advanced monitors, which just have color display. And finally, there are Ender modems. Wired modems only work with networking cables. Wireless modems only work within a certain radius and are more or less effective depending on the altitude and the current weather in your Minecraft world. On the other hand, Ender modems work with a ridiculously high radius, are not affected by weather, and work across dimensions, which means you can communicate with computers from the overworld all the way to the nether or the end or any other dimension introduced by other mods or Minecraft updates. Last but not least, we have command computers. I consider these the highest level of technology because although they're just like advanced computers, they have functions to execute commands, just like command blocks in vanilla Minecraft. For some reason, there is a crafting recipe for command computers, but you still need to use a chat command to give yourself the command block for this recipe. Commands are typically something you can type in the in-game chat to tell your game or server to do something, like change the time of day, weather, or various other god mode abilities. Commands basically change the world you are playing in, and can only be used if you have command privileges in the, in the server or have cheats enabled in your single player world. This is different from the cheat mode in JEI. Commands can also be run automatically by using command blocks. You can do even more if you combine them with redstone and other command blocks. Command computers do basically what command blocks do, but combine it with the power of Lua programming. You can see what commands there are in your game by typing slash question mark or slash help in the chat. You should look into the Minecraft wiki if you want to learn more about what kind of commands there are and what they can do. And that's it for this lesson. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this lesson was informative. And if you have any questions about what I covered, or perhaps I missed something I should have mentioned here, please let me know in the comments section. I have one more lesson left in this chapter, and then we can start chapter 1 and actually start learning how to write programs. I hope to see you then!